The year is 1754. Over the last few years, many nations such as England, France, and Spain have been dominating North America, and many have been expanding their territory, and many nations want to be the dominant force in North America. And eventually, the British decide to open trade with the Iroquois Confederacy. But the French saw this fort as a threat and they sent a force of 500 men to expel the British and claim the fort as their own. They named it Fort Duquesne. But on May 28, 1754, under orders to expel the French from the Ohio Territory, a young Major George Washington surrounded a small French force less than his size and killed the majority and captured the remaining. But on July 3, 1754, the French, with their Indian allies, launched an attack and captured the fort which Washington called Fort Necessity. The French had only lost three men, while Washington had lost 31, and the remaining were allowed to leave with him. This is the only time George Washington would ever surrender. The year is now 1755, and the British forces in North America have developed a plan to win this so-called minor war. Basically, it's a three-pronged attack, with General Braddock sent to capture Fort Duquesne, Major General William Johnson was to take control of Lake George, and Lieutenant Colonel Robert Monckton was to take control of Fort Beausejour before moving on to the fortress of Louisbourg, and the American colonies would heavily finance this war against France, and they would supposedly get their money back after the war. On June 16th, the British plan went into action. Robert Monckton captured the fort of Beausejour. In total, only 12 men were killed. And sadly, as a security risk, 11,500 French Canadians were forcibly removed from their homes and shipped to the American colonies. Meanwhile, General Braddock was moving to Fort Duquesne, and on July 9th, he engaged the French in battle and was horribly defeated, and Braddock himself was killed in this fight. The British lost 457 men, while the French only lost 23. By now, Major General Johnson was marching to Fort Carrion and Lake George. And on September 8th, he engaged the French forces in battle. And while he won the battle, he wasn't able to move anymore and instead built a fort which he called Fort William Henry. Johnson lost 300 men, and the French suffered 450 dead. By the year 1756, the French and British had finally declared war and joined what was now called the Seven Years' War. By 1757, the French general Montcalm had launched a counterattack, capturing Fort William Henry in Fort Oswego. In this short time, 82 Frenchmen were killed. In exchange, the British lost 323 men and 4,035 were captured. The year is 1758 and the British desperately need a victory in North America. And on July 6th through the 8th, the British assembled the largest army the continent has ever seen. 18,000 men are sent to capture Fort Carrion and destroy Montcalm's army. But despite being outnumbered and with no Indian allies in this battle, Montcalm wins. 1,100 British troops are killed and 100 French die. But finally, the British luck changes. Brigadier General James Wolfe, with 26,000 men and a fleet of almost 200 ships, are besieging the fortress of Louisbourg, and on July 26, they finally capture it. 172 British troops are killed, and the French lose 102 men. The loss of Fort Louisbourg is a terrible loss for the French forces in North America. And out west in the Ohio Territory, the British Lieutenant Colonel John Bradstreet, with a force of 2,600 men, mostly militia, planned to besiege the fort of Frontenac. And on October 28th, Bradstreet captures the fort. The year is 1759, 
and things have finally turned around for the British. On July 26th, the British tried one more time to capture the fort of Carrion, but this time they did it. The garrison totaled only 400 men and 10% were captured. By now, the tide had turned, Fort Duquesne and Fort Niagara had finally been captured, and 240 British troops had been killed, while 440 French were killed. By now, Major General James Wolfe with a massive army was besieging the city of Quebec, the capital of French Canada, General Montcalm trapped in the city. But unfortunately, Wolfe was unable to lure Montcalm to fight. For three months, Montcalm held out in the city, but eventually, Wolfe met him on the Plains of Abraham and defeated him. 560 British troops died to take the city and to hold it from counterattack, while 620 French troops would be killed holding and trying to retake the city. And sadly, both General James Wolfe and General Montcalm were killed in the battle. The year is 1760. The British have nearly conquered all of French Canada. All that remains is the city of Montreal. And on September 8th, the city finally surrenders, and the French and Indian War is over. But the Seven Years' War would continue until 1763. And on February 10th, the Treaty of Paris is signed. In it, England returned certain colonies in North America and Africa, while France renounced all claims to the continent of North America, except of course for the colony of saint Dumont. But not all is well for the British. The war had come at the cost of 60 million pounds for the British alone. Added to that, the British already had a very large national debt to deal with. So add these two together, and the British were in debt 133 million pounds. Yikes! The British government decided to back down on their word and instead tax the American colonies even more. And you can find out how that worked out over on the American Revolutionary video. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check me out over on Patreon. The link is in the description.